Welcome to the Martial Arts and Life Podcast with United States Martial Art Hall of Fame member, nationally board certified life coach, and multi award winning author, Chris Wilder. Hello, good morning, good day, good tea time. I'm Chris Wilder. Hope this podcast is finding you well, whatever's going on in your day. Gosh, a while back, Lawrence Kane and I took a deep dive into the world of Sun Tzu. And as a result of that, Sun Tzu Said became the um, book. And there's an audio book that goes along with it. And so today, what I'm going to do is include an entire chapter. I think it's chapter four. We're going to include an entire chapter of Sun Tzu Said from the audio, from the Audible program on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon and you look up Sun Tzu Said, you can find uh, not only the Kindle version and the paper version, but you can also find the Audible version. And of course, in sharing this, I hope that you find enough interest in it that you would say, huh, I think I'm going to get that whole book. That sounds pretty good. And I hope that you're going to do what I do a lot of. Uh, (laughs) This sounds so silly, but it's what I do. I get a paperback and I also, or, you know, paper book, and I also get the audio book as well. And I bounce back and forth between the two. Now, that's kind of an old school thing, I guess, because I like paper. I like the way it works. I like the way it feels. I'm that guy. I have a thing about it. And so if I really do enjoy a book, I want that book on my shelf, and I want it there with uh, you know my tabs and my underlines and marks and comments in the margins, because that's what I do. Unless, of course, you know, a very expensive book, and you know, we all get that. But yeah, I'm a I'm a double down guy. I'm a double down guy. I got to if it's uh, popular out there, I got to have the audio file and the book. I don't necessarily recommend that for you. I don't think that that's something that everybody should undertake cuz well, you're paying double for a book, aren't you? But here's the audio file for Sun Tzu said and I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you enjoy Dorsey Jackson, who did the voice work. You heard him do a couple TV shows, commercials, some movie trailers, and uh, I think he did a bang-up job. So uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of chapter number four of Sun Tzu Said. Chapter four, Tactical Dispositions. In this chapter, we discover that he who was destined to defeat fights first and afterwards looks for victory. Of all the elements of conflict, tactics are the most easily understood, thus focused on the most. Yet tactics without strategy are a hodgepodge with no clear application. The goal is understood, to defeat the adversary, but the cohesive plan that assures victory is lacking. All the rudiments of battle must be taken into account and then bound together by strategy to assure success upon the battlefield. Thus, to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands yet the opportunity of defeating the adversary is provided by our enemy himself. In war, the victorious strategy only seeks battle after the victory has already been won. One, Sun Tzu wrote, the good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. Our strategy is strong, our supplies abundant, Now the only question becomes when to strike. With aptitude, diligence, and discipline, we can place ourselves beyond the possibility of defeat in almost any endeavor. Consider Tom Dempsey, 1941 to present, who was born with no toes on his right foot and no fingers on his right hand, yet dreamed of playing American football. He dedicated himself to mastering the only position he could attain with limited mobility and ball handling capability, a kicker. An undrafted free agent, Dempsey earned a spot on the New Orleans Saints NFL team, where in 1970, he won a game with a 63-yard field goal, a record which stood for 43 years until it was eventually broken by Matt Prater in 2013. Dempsey identified what he could do in the context of the sport, had a modified shoot build that could accommodate his deformity, and then intelligently applied himself to become the best kicker in the game. 
In addition to his record-breaking field goal, he was selected to the Pro Bowl, tapped as a first-team All-Pro, and inducted into the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame. For the win, with focus and process, the map to victory can be revealed and the future reasonably assured. You lose. Having a dream is important, but a dream without any process for achievement quickly becomes a nightmare of anxiety, fear, and failure. 2. Sun Tzu wrote, To secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. Worrying about what we cannot control is worthless. We must secure what is ours and continuously prepare such that we may take advantage of openings offered by others as they arise. The idea of having no concern other than observation with things that are beyond our control runs deep within the Stoic philosophy, a movement that grew out of the Hellenistic period, designed to help practitioners overcome their destructive emotions. Stoics focused on actions over words. We need not adhere to the Stoic way to adopt this pragmatic perspective, however. As Miyamoto Musashi, 1584-1645, wrote, Respect Buddha and the gods without counting on their help. This idea is not so much to discount what we cannot control, but rather to be aware of the moment we are in, shift our attention to the things that matter most, and constantly be prepared to take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. For the win, when you release the things that are outside of your control, you are able to bring more focus to the things you can affect. You lose. Simply because you cannot control an item today does not mean you should not keep an eye on it tomorrow. Situations change, and advantage may be seized with time. 3. Sun Tzu wrote, Thus the good fighter is able to secure himself against defeat, but cannot make certain of defeating the enemy. Even the best prepared individuals must face the realization that we cannot control every contingency. We may avoid defeating ourselves, but this does not always guarantee our victory. Although a winning track record buoys confidence, it may not carry us through novel or uncustomized challenges. Consider that every advertisement for financial or investment services includes a disclaimer along the lines of, past performance does not guarantee future performance. This provisio is set in place to protect a company against legal action if their client makes a lower return or loses money on their investment. Risk exists in almost every endeavor. No matter how well we prepare, no matter what we are told or believe, we must take this fact into account. For the win, ultimately, your resources are your own and should be used to build your best self. You lose. By focusing on the enemy and failing to shape your own forces, you will flip the proper order of preparation upside down. 4. Sun Tzu wrote, Hence the saying, one may know how to conquer without being able to do it. No matter how well we have prepared, the earth and the heavens choose, and the enemy gets a vote. We may know exactly how to succeed, but never get the opportunity to put our plans into action. Before we engage, we must know how serious a loss in battle can be, to us, our men, and our country. In an interview with former Central Intelligence Agency Director William Joseph Gates, 1913 to 1987, he made a comment about surgical military strikes and swift war. The general thrust of his observations pointed out that war, in any capacity, is unlikely to go perfectly as planned. The conflict often takes more resources, more time, and more men than anticipated when it was charted out in the war room. Nevertheless, sometimes the opposite occurs, and everything falls into place swiftly. Sometimes, we just get lucky. For instance, the United States Navy had its aircraft carriers out on drills on December 7, 1941, when the Japanese attacked and sank the moored ships at Pearl Harbor. Despite a heavy loss in men and equipment, this fortuitous timing left the American fleet with its most valuable ships and ability to project forts over great distances largely intact. For the win, there is a difference between book smart and street smart. This is the chasm between theory and practice. Victory in battle requires practical application of the art of war. You lose. Without the tempering of experience, your best plans will fail in application. 5. Sun Tzu wrote, Security against defeat implies defensive tactics. Ability to defeat the enemy means taking the offensive. Whenever we fight, we must push the enemy. As the adage states, the best defense is a good offense. Fighting defensively is a losing proposition. Siege warfare is the ultimate defensive action of a person, a city, or a business enterprise. 
Under siege, we are left with little option but to attempt to repel assaults as they occur, expending vital resources to at best hold our own as initiative favors the adversary. Unless we are able to start a successful counteroffensive, all we can hope for is to delay the inevitable, unless reinforcements arrive or some outside force bails us out of trouble. For instance, in 52 AD, Virgin Gitterix, 82 to 46 BC, a Gaelic king found himself and 80,000 of his men under siege by a force of 60,000 Romans at the fortress of Alesia. The Romans, under the leadership of Julius Caesar, rebuffed a spirited counterattack by his forces. The siege continued, and Virgin Gitterix was ultimately defeated, brought to Rome in chains, and ultimately executed six years later. Likewise, in most any violent encounter, a skillful aggressor may overwhelm and defeat a defensive fighter. For the win, you must use aggressive defense. In any defensive position, maintain the ability to strike when the right opportunity presents itself. You lose. Playing not to lose, in practical reality, is playing to lose slowly. This is no path to victory. 6. Sun Tzu Road Standing on the defensive indicates insufficient strength, attacking a superabundance of strength. If we are forced into a defensive posture, it means that our strength is inferior to that of our adversary. Superior forces initiate attack. When someone attacks us, we can be sure that they have taken our measure, found us wanting, and believe that they can win. Violence on the street is nothing like competition in the ring. Criminals never desire a fair fight. They want to secure our resources with minimal risk and effort. They want to win, and to do so convincingly. This means that they carefully select victims who appear to be easy targets, those who are small, weak, or inattentive. Consequently, defense does not deter a committed attacker nearly as much as the ability to fight back. For the win, even in defense you must threaten, and that threat must be understood by the enemy. You lose. Adopting a fully defensive position without the ability to strike signals victimhood. 7. Sun Tzu Road the general who is skilled in defense hides in the most secret recesses of the earth. He who is skilled in attack flashes forth from the topmost heights of heaven. Thus, on the one hand, we have ability to protect ourselves, on the other, a victory that is complete. Offense produces victory, but if we must play defense, it is prudent to hide our power until it is ready to be unleashed. We must follow these strategic principles even in defense, staving off damage while preparing for our counterstrike. If we must fight defensively, it is best to adopt the attitude of an assassin, sniper, or spy. We must be wily, not show our full strength until it is needed, and then strike swiftly and decisively in a flash to assure our victory. For instance, if we hold a weapon, we must keep it out of the adversary's sight until it is put to use. In this fashion, we turn the tables on our adversary through surprise, aggression, and skill. For the win, if the battle is imminent, hide your weapons. The enemy should never see all that you can bring to battle, only feel it when caught by surprise. You lose. Letting your opponent acquire accurate information regarding your resources is a failure of duty. 8. Sun Tzu wrote, To see victory only when it is within the kin, comprehension, of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. Seeing the obvious is by no means the key to brilliance. Perceiving what everybody else sees is not only focusing on the obvious, it is also the act of a herd animal. And sadly, a herd animal is only as intelligent as its dumbest creature. While the herd offers a certain degree of safety in numbers, it also follows the comfortable path, the obvious route, making it easy for predators to plan where and how to cut from the herd and pick off members of the group. Astute observation, the ability to grasp what others cannot, is the key for self-preservation when we find ourselves part of a crowd. For instance, during an active shooter incident, escape is paramount for those who are unarmed as the chances of successfully striking back are small. While the panicked throng attempts to fight their way through a door or window, an astute observer might create his own exit through a convenient wall by kicking his or her way through the sheetrock. For the win, not everybody can see the forest for the trees. Yet as a leader, you must see all elements of the battle and discern their relationships to one another. You lose. When you fail to understand the elements of battle by your own accord, you cannot react with alacrity. You will become lost, unable to see what is shown, to appreciate the insight of others. In this fashion, 
your plans become meaningless and unimplementable. 9. Sun Tzu wrote, Neither is it the acme of excellence if you fight and conquer and the whole empire says, Well done. Praise is appealing, yet it often comes from those that have not done the hard work. The praise of others is fine but fleeting. Consider, who still remembers who was the most valuable player in the 1988 World Series? The adulation of others should not be given much weight in our own self-appraisal. We already know what we do well. Constructive criticism, on the other hand, can help expose weaknesses we may not be aware of, vulnerabilities that may be exploited by our adversaries. When we set our ego aside, listen to the criticism, and think well and hard upon its merits, we become stronger. True leaders are intrinsically motivated. We do not need the accolades of others, yet we can continuously improve and evolve when we understand and work to overcome our flaws. For the win, alignment with an ascended goal is an underpinning of a leader's leader. You lose. Seek honors to gratify your ego and you become a politician, not a leader. 10. Sun Tzu wrote, To lift an autumn hair, the fur of a rabbit which is the finest in the fall season, is no sign of great strength. To see the sun and moon is no sign of sharp sight. To hear the noise of thunder is no sign of a quick ear. It is not through observation of everyday events that we attain great insight, but rather through a deep study of the forces behind the scenes that make things happen. We must look behind the obvious to understand not only what we observe, but also why. This illuminates deeper meaning. For instance, a robber might steal our wallet at gunpoint, a burglar might break into our house, and abscond our jewelry while we're on vacation, or an embezzler might purloin our coffers at work. Clearly what's happening is important at the moment, but isn't it better to understand why we are selected? To know the attributes, oversights, or inattentions that lead to victimhood. Only in this fashion may we address our shortcomings and prevent a reoccurrence. For the win, viewing the content and the context of a moment brings insight. The experienced leader uses all available resources to assist in decision-making. You lose. Focusing on the obvious brings little insight. You cannot lead if you do not understand. 11. Sun Tzu wrote, What the ancients called a clever fight is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. Mastery of strategy and tactics not only allows us to win, but also makes our victories appear effortless. Winning is good, but total victory, that effortless appearing triumph that few can emulate, is far better. Oftentimes, this effortless excellence brings unexpected opportunities. For example, in 458 BC, Lucius Quincius Censonatus, 519 to 430 BC, was appointed dictator of Rome in order to rescue a consular army that was surrounded by the Aki on Mount Algidus. At the time of his appointment, he was working on a small farm. Censonatus assumed total power put down the rebels, and then vacated his position and returned to farming after he finished less than a year later. The embodiment of the Roman virtues of manliness and devotion to the Republic, Cincinnatus was so well respected that the Roman people reportedly made him their dictator a second time 18 years later to check the tyrannical ambitions of Spurus Maelius, unknown birth to 439 BC. For the win, the clever fighter is prepared for any eventuality. With sound strategy, you could respond to whatever you face with assuredness. You lose. A protracted battle indicates a lack of preparation. The tactical approach is useful in certain situations, but far from a panacea. Ultimately, it leads to failure. 12. Sun Tzu wrote, Hence his victories bring him neither reputation for wisdom nor credit for courage. When victory appears too easy, we may not get the credit we deserve, despite the fact that it was our mastery of the art of war that led to an easy triumph. Preparation, resilience, discipline, and grit are vital aspects of success, yet others around us perceive only the result, not the process of achieving it. A challenge is that people often observe in others what they imagine about themselves. If it looks easy, surely anyone can accomplish the same thing with a little determination, luck, or perseverance. Consequently, if our victory appears effortless, many will believe that it stemmed from good fortune rather than through wisdom, courage, or skill. Little credit for our expertise will come our way. For the win, swift victory is the goal, and the success alone is fulfilling, regardless of any accolade earned from your endeavor. You lose. By confusing praise, admiration, or appreciation with victory, 
you vainly chase after things that do not matter. 13. Sun Tzu wrote, He who wins his battle by making no mistakes. Making no mistakes is what establishes the certainty of victory, for it means conquering an enemy who is already defeated. If our preparation and execution are mistake-free, we are destined to prevail. In everyday life, we learn and grow from mistakes, yet in combat, any error may be our last, as the adversary seeks to exploit our misstep. This is why training and preparation are so critical for survival. Without arduous, realistic practice and proficiency, degrades unacceptably under adrenal stress during a life-or-death encounter. Counter ambush and other reality-based instruction using firearms loaded with sim munition, non-lethal training ammo, shock knife, training knives, pepper spray, and similar tools that can inflict pain without serious injury. Add a measured level of risk that conditions a better trained response in participants than rubber guns, plastic knives, and other inert tools. This helps us learn to deal with both conflict and adrenaline, giving us a leg up during any violent confrontation. For the win, mistakes will always be made. Strive for the least impactful errors. You lose. Mistakes can be born of ignorance, an action or misplaced action. All of these can be within your control unless you fail to adequately prepare ahead of battle, in which case, you are responsible for your failure. 14. Sun Tzu wrote, Hence, the skillful fighter puts himself into a position which makes defeat impossible and does not miss the moment for defeating the enemy. We must place ourselves in a position where we cannot lose and then wait for the optimal moment to attack before we strike. Tournaments, duels, and other mutual forms of combat, typically social violence, afford ample warning of what is about to happen so we can usually prepare and respond judiciously. Ambush, typically predatory violence, on the other hand, changes everything. Distance, timing, type, and direction of attack. These critical factors are all selected by the adversary when he strikes first. He or she will assault us without warning, attacking from a range and bearing where his weapon or empty-handed techniques will cause the most damage and disruption. This can be an insurmountable advantage if we are not highly skilled, experienced, and at least a little bit lucky. It is also an approach we can emulate should the need arise. For the win, great generals create the circumstances where their victory is preordained. You lose. There is no second place in a real fight. Failure to stack the deck in your favor means failure in everything that matters. 15. Sun Tzu wrote, Thus it is that in war, the victorious strategist only seeks battle after the victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat fights first and afterwards looks for victory. Engaging in battle primed for victory assures that we will win, whereas going into battle with the intent to fight means that we are set to lose. Violence professionals, such as soldiers, law enforcement officers, bouncers, and bodyguards, move through the world differently than ordinary individuals. United States Marine General James Mad Dog Mattis, 1950 to present, summed it up nicely when he said, be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everybody you meet. For example, career criminals have knowledge, skill, practice, and experience at putting victims into positions of extreme disadvantage so they can have their way with them. An example, assault, robbery, rape, or whatever. Unless we have equivalent experience and practice at recovering from positions of severe disadvantage, an ambush attacker has an almost insurmountable advantage. So awareness, avoidance, and counter-ambush skills are vital for self-defense. For the win, work the battle plan in reverse, moving from the ultimate goal backward through the various options for achieving victory, and it will become obvious which choices are better than others. You lose. Thinking, we will go to war and win, is folly. It is the incorrect order of planning, a fool's errand. 16. Sun Tzu wrote, The consummate leader cultivates the moral law and strictly adheres to the method and discipline. Thus, it is in his power to control success. A military enterprise is only as strong as its weakest warrior. Tolerance is for peacetime. Lack of order and structure cannot be abided in war, as those embody this weakness will suck the discipline from any fighting force. The same principle holds true in all aspects of life. Discipline and direction are paramount. People seldom hit what they do not aim at. Crafting a vision and mission for ourselves and our enterprise helps articulate our purpose, values, and actions necessary to stay on track and achieve our goals. Further, the shorter, more concise a plan is, the more likely it is to be followed, for both statements are far easier to write than pithy ones, but simultaneously far less useful. So we must set aside however much time it takes to digest every word and get it exactly right. Thus, we inform our actions with a strategy in all aspects of our lives.
For the win, keep the discipline of the greats who have come before. You lose. Failure to recognize that you must lead in all aspects of behavior at all times leaves a weak link. This lack of leadership will be exploited by your enemies. 17. Sun Tzu wrote, In respect of military method, we have firstly, measurement, secondly, estimation of quantity, thirdly, calculation, fourthly, balancing of chances, and fifthly, victory. We must measure, estimate, then weigh the two, figure our chances, and when we find all in our favor, strike. Our physicality, physique, posture, the way we stand and move, even the way we breathe, gives clues to astute observers about who we are and how we might handle ourselves during a violent confrontation. What others can perceive of us, we can observe in those around us as well. This principle is not solely about size or fitness level, however. A smaller person intimidates differently than a bigger one does, even if they are equally skilled. Yet dangerous people give off a certain vibe, oftentimes even where they're ghosting, trying to hide it, that others can pick up and act upon. Conversely, certain people have the kind of aura that makes others want to avoid disappointing them, so bad things rarely come their way. In this fashion, it is possible to take another's measure and decide the winner without actually having to fight. Measuring others, calculating shrewdly, and balancing our chances lets us know when it is or is not prudent to fight. For the win, with prudent measurement, you will know when you may safely engage and when you must avoid battle to win. 18. Sun Tzu wrote, Measurement owes its existence to Earth. Estimation of quantity to measurement. Calculation to estimate of quantity. Balancing of chances to calculation. And victory to balancing of chances. Earth comprises distances, great and small, danger and security, open ground and narrow passes, and the chances of life and death. Through prudent observation and analysis of Earth, we are able to ascertain the paths to victory, balance the odds in our favor, and prevail. The battlefield we choose should be one of our liking where the odds favor our endeavor. Yet once selected, it is unlikely to change much during the course of the battle. We are committed to seeing our plan through to victory, strategic withdrawal, or defeat. This reinforces why strategy is supreme and tactics secondary. Sure, we must apply tactics effectively in order to implement our strategy, but if the strategy itself is flawed, we extinguish our chances for victory. Consider, for instance, Eastman Kodak's failure to embrace digital photography. Despite inventing the world's first digital camera in 1975, Kodak focused on maintaining its profitable photographic film sales, where at one time the company owned 80% of the U.S. market and was a major player worldwide. As digital photography grew in popularity, however, film sales spiraled downward and were eventually suspended in 2006 after 74 years of production. Kodak declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2012. For the win, the battlefield is the tool of measurement with its own spans and units. Use it wisely. You lose. The battlefield was there before you arrived and it will be there after you leave. When you fail to use it, it will use you or the enemy will. Either way, you lose. 19. Sun Tzu wrote, A victorious army opposed to a routed one is as a pawn's weight placed in the scale against a single grain. Losing a significant battle not only destroys vital men and resources, but also crushes the spirit of the losing side's remaining forces. Losing a fight can be scary. It can leave physical as well as emotional scars, even spark psychological disorders. Oftentimes, victims are motivated to purchase a gun, carry a knife, or study martial arts to create to regain their lost sense of power and control. The fact of the matter is, however, that guns, knives, and martial arts skills do not ward off danger. Weapons can help us deal with violence more effectively, but only in select circumstances. Self-defense is not about fighting. It is really about not being where the other guy or guys wants to fight. It's only when we've screwed up our self-defense that fighting skills and tools come in handy. It's best to be safe, but if we cannot, it's important to be dangerous enough to extricate ourselves from peril. As L-O-T-A-R Combat's motto states, if you can't be safe, be deadly. That is sound advice. For the win, win the first contact. You lose. A loss at initial contact will crush morale of the unskilled and challenge the will of the skilled. You cannot afford to fail at first contact with the enemy. 20. Sun Tzu wrote, the onrush of a conquering force is like the bursting of pent-up waters into a chasm a thousand fathoms deep. If we have momentum, we may become impossible to stop. Momentum in battle is significant. Prussian general and military theorist Karl von Clausewitz, 1780-1831, called it the concentration principle. 
striking at a moment when the center of gravity is dense and resources can be focused for an effective disabling assault. Consider the Blitzkrieg Lightning War Offensive carried out by the German military during World War II. This strategy was designed to leverage momentum by creating psychological shock through the employment of surprise, speed, and superiority in firepower and equipment. It proved effective at flustering and disorganizing the opposing side's forces. Though largely associated with the Nazis, the principle of victory through overwhelming swift action was not their invention. The same tactic was used by historical figures such as King Alexander the Great, 356 to 323 BC, Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, 1194 to 1250, and Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769 to 1821, too. For the win, get there fastest with the most. This, or something very much like this, has been said by every coach of every sport across the planet at one time or another, because it's true. This is how you win. You lose. Show up late for the battle. End of story. And you as well. Carl von Clausewitz. A bringing forward of the classic work, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, is available on all three formats at Amazon.com. That means you can get it on Kindle if you'd like. You can get it in a paperback. Or you can get it in the Audible format, which is slightly over 10 hours of fantastic narration by a professional that we hired by the name of Dorsey Jackson. He really nailed it. You're going to want to have it in your library. Hey, take care. We'll talk soon.